Welcome to the beginner series revamp for 2021 and headed into 2022. If you've seen the last one, you probably already know that it is outdated to the point that a lot of the information in it is no longer accurate. So here we are today, starting over at level one on a fresh account. And basically we're gonna try to go over everything in as simple terms as possible. So whether you're just starting out in Call of the Wild or have been in it for a while and are trying to learn a thing or two, hopefully it can be helpful. But of course we have a tutorial to take care of. Now for the sake of this kind of level one playthrough, I've turned off the dialogue with the reserve warden just so that we're not like talking over the warden or anything like that. So really quickly, of course we have to shoot the white tail and it's going to have us track it down and go and do that. Now I also have the mission system off. So that's gonna have like less subtitles on the bottom of the screen. Missions do help you by the way, I do recommend having the missions on, but just for the sake of kind of doing this playthrough and making it a little bit easier for, I guess, everything to kind of flow, those are off in this instance. But that is our tutorial white tail doe, and you can probably see I just aimed right there behind the shoulder. We're gonna talk about shot placement and that kind of stuff a whole lot in just a little bit. But that is the tutorial done. And now we can move on with kind of like what to do when you're starting out in Call of the Wild. Now, as we're on our way here up to the lookout point, we're gonna go through kind of the starting equipment that you get when you start in Call of the Wild. And I would also mention that the lookout points are really important in this game. And if you had the missions on, like I said, they would basically guide you right to them. But what you can do, and you'll see it when we get up here, is go up to them, discover them, and it'll show you a lot of the map and some of the locations of outposts. Every single lookout point you discover will show you some outposts that are around you, so definitely go to those. And like I said, the mission will guide you there. We just have this off for the sake of this. But in terms of the starting equipment, we start with three weapons, the Ranger 243, the Focoso 357, and the Caversham Steward 12 gauge. Really, those three weapons cover the same animal classes. If we go into the ammo, we can see that. In the bottom right, we have recommended classes 2 to 6 for the 243, 2 to 6 for the 357, and 2 to 5 for the 12 gauge buckshot. Now, later on, when we unlock 12 gauge slugs and birdshot, that's going to be a little more useful. The 357 is kind of just a close range handgun that's not going to do a lot for us. In terms of the callers, we start with a bleak call, a predator call, and then a roadier call, which we can use on other maps. We're here on Layton Lakes, and I still think Layton is one of the best maps to start at, so these two calls are the ones we can actually use. We can call in coyotes, black-tailed deer, and white-tailed deer, all just with these two callers. Then, of course, we have the scent eliminator. That's going to be nice if the wind is not in our favor. We can apply that and do a little better for animals that are downwind. And the binoculars, which we're using to just get a little better look at the animals that we are after. As I mentioned, you can climb up these lookout points and then get to the little map area, hit survey, and it's going to give us this nice little kind of view around us. And once it goes through that, it's going to open the map for us. And I believe this one shows us the locations of two different outposts, if I'm not mistaken. So it'll open the map and we can see these green kind of house icons. That's where the outposts are. So this is the close one. I think if the missions were on, that is the one it guides you to. But like I said, the missions will kind of do that for you. It'll give you a little waypoint. So we're going to head down there and hopefully along the way we can get another animal or two and level up because I want to talk about skills and perks. They're a very important part of this game and understanding them is, I would say, pretty crucial to getting the best setup possible for finding trophies. So when you arrive at an outpost, there are flagpoles at all of them that you can go up to and claim. And once you do that, you can see this little uh, icon that pops up. Fast travel and facilities are now available at this outpost. So we can fast travel to it at any time. And we can also access the bed in here, which allows us to rest and change the time. For a small bit of cash right now, we're not going to do that because we don't have a whole lot, but we can rest to any time we want for really any ideal time for any species. And then over here, we can access the weapon locker. And as I was talking about, the 357 and Caversham 12 gauge aren't of that much use to us right now. So we're actually going to leave those behind. Also, when we shot that first doe, we unlocked the 243 polymer tip bullets. In my opinion, pretty much any weapon, the polymer tip bullets are the way to go. So we're going to buy that pack of 10. It's just going to be better for us. If we compare these stats really quickly here, you can see with the polymer tips, you have 30 penetration and four expansion. The soft points have 15 penetration and 17 expansion. Now that means any individual organ that's hit is going to bleed a lot more. 
but with the polymer tips we can hit more organs and the way the game works we're going to look at a harvest screen in a moment just hitting those organs is more important than the damage you do so we're going to leave all the ammo behind as well just to clear some space and we'll head off and try to get an ammo or two and it looks like we've got a little group of white-tailed deer here drinking and one thing that's worth pointing out before we do anything else, in the top right of that kind of spotting box, you see a little number four. That is telling you the class of ammo you need to use to take them ethically. And like I said, we'll talk about the harvest screen a little bit and we can see that a little better. But if we mouse over our 243 ammo, you see that class is two to six again. So obviously four is within that range and we can use the 243 on these deer. We'll try to pick the best buck because it is going to give us the most XP. They all seem to be roughly the same size, so we might just take the front one since he's kind of the easiest shot. And of course, we have the starting scope, so that is going to be a good thing. We'll try to get a sort of chest shot in there. Hopefully that's going to be into a lung. We'll have to kind of track him down and see where he ends up. But I think with the 243 polymer tip bullets, that should be enough to bring him down. Looks to be vital blood. That, of course, is the ideal kind of blood splatter you want to see from a shot and if we track him up in this direction he shouldn't be too far from us we see that medium bleed rate which means he won't be going all that far by the way i am going to be doing this kind of playthrough with no dlcs so no bloodhound to help us track we may want to pull out our hunter mate we can kind of see what direction he went based on that i'm not seeing a lot of tracks but there's enough here to guide us along our way and at the end of the trail our buck is down right here so we're going to go through everything here on the harvest screen as best I can. Obviously, the animal class is up here in the top left under the name. We can see the gender, weight, fur type, tracking distance, difficulty, trophy type, which of course is the antlers here, and trophy organs. Now, the trophy organs is actually important here. Basically, if we go down to the harvest checks, we can see that we need to pass those to get the full score. There are four harvest checks. We're going to kind of go over those a little bit more in a sec. But you see the third one down is intact trophy organs. So we go back to this. That is the skull. What that means is if we shoot this deer in the skull, we're going to lose some points and this silver medal is going to be a bronze. So for pretty much every species, skull is the trophy organ. And that essentially means you don't want to shoot any animals in the head in this game. There are a couple of exceptions. Birds and rabbits, I think, are really the only ones. But for the most part, that's kind of a rule of thumb to follow. But if we go down a little further here, we can see the trophy rating of 162.7. And if we mouse over that, you can see the requirements for the different metals. So of course, to get silver, we needed a 112 or well over that. Gold would require 193.7, obviously below that, so we get the silver. And for a diamond metal, 255 is the requirement. To go back to harvest checks, we see that we passed them all successfully. So you have to use the proper ammo that correlates with the class that we looked at when we took the shot, we just need anything in that class 4 range. We need to shoot the animal two times or less, so you can make two shots on the same animal. Three or more, you're going to end up losing that harvest check. The intact trophy organs that we talked about, and we need a vital organ hit. Now, vitals in Call of the Wild are lungs, heart, neck bone, brain, although you got to be careful because of the skull. It's essentially impossible to hit the brain and not hit the skull. And also the liver. And just quickly at the bottom, we see that we gained 167 XP from that, 679 cash, and the session score, that is related to multiplayer, that doesn't matter at all for our single player here. There are bonuses that go into the cash and XP, they're not super relevant other than for a couple of missions. We got 54% quick kill, I think that means once you get to 8 seconds, the quick kill starts to go down, so he was alive for maybe 12 seconds after the shot, something like that. And the species difficulty... Whitetail max at level 3, so we'll get a 25% bonus with that. I think that is everything on the harvest screen other than the true score. Now, a lot of animals have true racks in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Some don't yet, but eventually they all will. And that just kind of gives you a breakdown of the score. It's not super relevant to anything as far as getting started, but if you want to understand where your score is coming from, you can go through these and see where all the kind of score adds up. You can always go and look exactly how much XP is required to level up. If you go into the codex, then go to Hunter and Profile Card, you can see we're at 467 out of 500 XP to reach our next level. And when you level up, up to, I believe, level 37 or 38, you gain a skill or perk point every other level. 
once you reach that threshold, I think it's like every two levels or something like that, but especially if you're just starting out, you can pretty much bank on getting a skill or perk point for every single level. Now, over here was a Blacktail Doe. I think she must be hiding kind of in the brush there, but if we back up just a little bit, we should be able to get a shot at her as she is there feeding, and hopefully that's going to be enough XP to get us the next level. So, kind of a shot behind the shoulder once again. That tends to be kind of the shots to go for. We are using the polymer tip round, so we have a little more leeway to reach back through a shoulder or a shoulder blade or anything like that that may get in our way. And that's why I wanted to go to the polymer tips as soon as possible. With that white tail buck, he was kind of facing us, and that would have been a risky shot to take with the soft point bullets, but with the polymer tips, they've got that extra penetration, and you can be a lot more confident taking a shot like that. But we saw her go down. That is going to give us another 110 XP for that shot, and you can see long liver stomach, no issue for the 243 to take down that black tail, but that's going to be enough to level us up to level 2, and it's an opportunity to talk about skill and perk points. So for level 2 we get a new skill point, and if we go into our skills, we can see that we can spend that, but there's not a lot of options yet. You have to spend enough points in tier 0 to get to tier 1, enough in tier 1 to get to tier 2, and so on. So we could do Stalker or Ambusher. I tend to think that Sense in the Hunter Call of the Wild are not that important. So we're going to start out in Stalker and go ahead and get level 1 in Locate Tracks. That's just going to narrow that tracking cone. So when we pick up this Black Bear track right here and get our Hunter Mate back out, we'll be able to see the cone's a lot narrower and it's a little easier to get a guess on where the next track is going to be. Now, skills and perks are incredibly important in Call of the Wild, as I mentioned earlier. It kind of allows you to choose what your hunter is going to be good at. And if you want to see in my Discord, I have a screenshot of like all my skills and perks and like the way that I have it set up. If you want to copy that, feel free. The Discord link is in the description below. But that is why finding animals and taking out animals early on in the game is really important. Getting those skills and perk points and kind of making your hunter better is going to make it easier to find trophy animals in the long run, so my recommendation is to focus on just shooting as many animals as you can and not worrying about trophy animals or trophies too much until later on when you're a little bit of a higher level. So by unlocking those skill and perk points and spending them in those right areas, you can kind of better your odds and be better off in the long run. The way that animals spend the vast majority of their time in the Hunter Call of the Wild is in zones, and we saw earlier the white-tailed deer drinking. This herd is doing the exact same thing, and all members of the same species on any map will kind of have the same zone schedule. So if we open the map here and mouse over that zone, in the bottom right, it tells us that this need zone is for white-tailed deer drinking from 12 to 1600, and if we go back to the previous drink zone, we see 12 to 1630. There's only ever gonna be that 30 minute window for like a difference, all white tail deer from 12 to 1600 or from 1230 to 1630, anywhere in that range, are going to be drinking on Leighton Lakes. Now, there is another map in the Hunter Call of the Wild, Rancho del Arroyo, a DLC map, where white tail drink at a different time, but for our purposes, that is going to be the white tail drink time, and we can clearly see this level 2 is the biggest one, so I think even with a little bit of a rangier shot, with the 243 polymer tip bullets, we should be able to make that kind of through the shoulder and a little bit behind it, and hopefully he's going to be going down. And I do have a video kind of going over shot placement in the past, and I'll link that if you guys want to see it, but hopefully you can kind of see where I'm trying to place my shots, just a little bit behind the shoulder, avoid going through that shoulder blade if you can, and back there into the vitals, but it looked like he was running as if he was hit pretty well. And if we open the map, we can see there is hunting pressure. Now again, I've done a video explaining hunting pressure probably a year or so ago, and that hasn't changed, so I'll link that in the description if you want to understand it a little bit better, but it basically means the animal that we've shot in that area has died. We do have the vital blood here, so we're good, and just to kind of show the tracking process once again, we'll go up through here and follow him. Now one thing that can be very useful, we spotted that guy after we took the shot, and you can see on the hunter mate, that kind of green icon with a, I think it's like a wild boar, that is just indicating like an animal that we previously spotted, and that is the last location that we had him highlighted, and that gives us a really good idea of what direction to go in, even if we don't actually see the tracks, but in this case, the tracks are going up through here, and I don't expect them to go much farther. Now, 
I do want to go back to zones for just a little bit. Like I said, species have all their kind of zone schedules throughout the map, and if you want to see what those are, you can join my Discord, and we have a bunch of spreadsheets with all those zones and zone times. So that link, once again, is in the description below. But of course, for Whitetail, you can go through and discover them, or for any species, when you spot them in their zone, that zone time is going to be on the map, and you can go through it and discover them all that way. But our Whitetail buck is down here, and I just happen to know that he is a pretty good size. We'll see what he ends up scoring for us. By the way, I look up when I harvest animals because it gives us like a nice blue background to the harvest. It is a Diamond Whitetail at 259.4. I thought when I saw that rack, he might be. So Diamond is technically the highest metal that you can get in the game. Now, Whitetail are the only species that have a great one, so there's a kind of tier beyond that. It's really difficult to explain and I guess in terms of kind of like beginning we're not gonna worry about great ones too much so this is sort of the ultimate metal to go for and I don't even know what to say <laughs> starting out uh, and we got a diamond before we got a gold but what do you do <laughs> you stand right there so we actually can't tax and we don't even have enough money but we can save him and like I said I'm not really doing DLCs for this playthrough so we don't technically have a trophy lodge to take him to, but we would be able to go back and basically buy a trophy lodge, and he's still going to be saved for us. So if you do that, if you're starting out and you fight a really cool animal, save it, and you can buy a trophy lodge later whenever you can get to that. And also you see there, we unlock equipment by kind of gaining XP. That's also really important, and not too far from now, we'll be able to unlock a better scope and kind of be able to make even better shots. But that is going to be for next time. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Join the Discord, there are a bunch of helpful members there, or you can ask me in the stream chats. We stream once a week here on YouTube and three times a week over on Twitch. But that is going to do it for this video, so I hope it helps you out in starting Call of the Wild, or even if you've been started for a while, hopefully some of these tips can help you out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.